Good morning, GC of South Metro. Can I ask everyone to stand? And, uh, let's take time to uh, just say hi and hello uh, to our uh, neighbor and uh, just give a warm welcome, warm GCF welcome. It's so nice for us to be gathered here, celebrate God's goodness, God's faithfulness for the whole week. And uh, we're going to start uh, singing together uh, this uh, old familiar hymn that will remind us that we are indeed worshiping an, a holy God. It says so in a first Psalm, Samuel uh, chapter 2, verse 2. There is no one holy like the Lord. Indeed, there is no one beside you, nor there is any rock like our God. May we be reminded that as His children, we are called to have a consecrated life. Let's sing this together. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of Thy love. At the impulse of Thy love. Sing this again. Take my feet. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my King. Always only for my King. For the third verse, I ask the ladies to sing this. Sing the fourth verse. Take my love, my Lord, I pour at thy feet this treasure store. Take myself and I will be ever. Verse 5. Take my moments. Take my moments and my days. Let them flow in endless rays. Take my intellect and use every power as thou shalt choose. Take my will. Take my will and make it thine. It shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own. It shall be thine.
continue to sing praises unto our God. In Psalms 21, 13, it says, Be exalted, O Lord, in your strength. We will sing and praise your power. Let's sing this together. Here in this house of the great King, we come together now to worship Him. This house is built on Christ our rock. Cannot be shaken. Cannot be shaken. God is awesome. God is awesome in this place. We sense His presence as we sing His praise. There is power here for miracles. Set the captives free and make the broken whole. God is awesome. He's so awesome. God is awesome in this place. Come on, every boy, let's sing here in this house. Here in this house of the great King. together now to worship Him. This house is built on Christ our rock. Cannot be shaken. Cannot be shaken. Cannot be shaken. Cannot be shaken. For God is awesome in this place. God is awesome in this place. We sense His presence as we sing Him. There is power here for miracles. Set the captives free and make the broken whole. God is awesome. He's so awesome. God is awesome in this place. Let's sing this together. I found where I belong. And I found where I belong I'm a living stone In this house I will grow And I found where I belong I'm a living stone In this house I will grow I found where I belong I'm a living stone In this house we will grow, we will grow. And I found where I belong, I'm a living stone, in this house we will grow. There is power here for miracles, set the countless free and make the broken home. And God is awesome, He's so awesome. God is awesome in this place. Power here for miracles. Set the captives free and make the broken home. God is awesome. He's so awesome. He's so awesome. God is awesome. God is awesome. He's so awesome. God is awesome. God is awesome, He's so awesome, God is awesome in this place. You deserve, Lord, our highest praise. You are indeed holy and praiseworthy. Let's sing this together. We stand and lift up our hands. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down. We bow down and worship Him now. How great, how awesome is He. And together we sing. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled. Glory, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. We 
stand and lift up your hands. We stand and lift up our hands. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship Him now. How great, how awesome is He. And together we sing. Come on. It's rising up all around. It's the end of the Lord. Come on, every voice. It's rising up. It's rising up all around. It's the end of the Lord. It's rising up. It's rising up. a big clap offering to our holy Lord, a holy God that we are worshiping this morning. Indeed, as we worship a holy God, He also asks holiness from us. In Romans 12 verse 1, it says, My brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, let's offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, which is our spiritual worship. As we sing the song, may this be a song of consecration. We want to see how God will work wonders in our lives, in the life of this church, in the lives of the people around us. Let's consecrate ourselves. We as His children should be surrendered to Him fully. Our minds and thoughts are meditated upon His words. Let the work of our hands bring glory to His name. And let the steps of our feet go towards the path of His righteousness. And as I may our desire, may our hearts be aligned to Him as we will be used for His holy purpose alone. Let's sing this together, my heart is yours. I give you my life, I give you my trust, Jesus, and you are my God, and 
Let's sing this together. I give you my life. I give you my life. I give you my trust. Jesus. You are my God. And you are my God. And you are in us, Jesus. And you are in us, Jesus. My heart is yours. Out my life. are yours. Take it all, O oh God. You are an awesome God. Our Lord God Almighty, the earth is filled with your glory. Lord, we praise you for all the things you have done in our lives this week. We thank you for allowing us to learn valuable lessons along the way 
as we went about whatever we had to do at home or at work during the week. We praise you for the shelter of your presence that gives us confidence and security in our lives. Thank you for blessing us with so many positive things. But even with the trials we were confronted with, we acknowledge that we could only have stood strong because there is a God who loves us and who protects us. We praise you, Father, that you are and all, will always be there for us to help us and to give us peace and comfort. We may not always understand your perfect plan for us, but we acknowledge that it is bigger and greater than we can ever realize or even imagine. May our hearts remain steadfast in trusting you and your overall plan for our lives. We commit to you, Pastor Lito, as he preaches on your word in Joshua. May you prepare our hearts to receive what you have planned for us today. I pray for your powerful anointing upon him as he delivers your message. May every word that he utters be accompanied by the power of your Holy Spirit. Allow his preaching to penetrate our hearts and cause everyone in this worship hall to listen and have a deeper appreciation and understanding of your word. I also pray that all of us here today will take the right steps to embrace your message and we claim the power that your spirit gives and with this power, we trust that we can live according to your purposes. We pray all of these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning. First of all, I would like to uh, thank uh, every one of you who greeted me on my birthday. And the prayers that you have offered for me, I receive all those things uh, with thanksgiving and anticipation of what the Lord uh, will do in my life uh, in the coming year. And I really appreciate that. I also received a, a birthday card uh, from someone. And I, uh, I was so encouraged by the by the verse that was inscripted. In Isaiah 58, uh, it says, The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs. So when I received that last uh, Friday, I, I, I got so excited because it is such a very beautiful uh, promise from the Lord. But I look at the, uh, the entire verse and it says, And the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your desire in scorched places and make your bones Strong, and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. So I just love that picture of God's uh, blessing. And it uh, reminded me that uh, when God guides us, our desires will surely be satisfied. When God uh, guides us, our needs will surely be met. And I claim that for myself uh, this coming year, that God will continue to guide me. Now, as a husband to, to Linda, as a father to our children, and as a pastor that God has called me to be, uh, specifically here in, uh, in GCF South Metro uh, family. I pray that God will uh, just meet all my needs and even the desires of my heart, not only for my good, but most importantly for the building up of His church and the glory of His name. God is so good. Uh, I just passed the... Uh, the century mark uh, last Friday, so it means I am 51, and I have experienced the goodness and the graciousness of God, and God is so faithful. And that is also my prayer for, for each one of you, that uh, what God has promised in this verse, uh, you can claim it, that God will grant the desires of your hearts, that God will guide you, that God will lead you, that God will instruct you in the ways that you should go. It's very important for us to, to have a sense of purpose and direction in life. 
Now, last uh, couple of years ago, in my, during my spiritual birthday, I realized that my dad uh, went home to be with the Lord at 94. So I, I told the Lord, if you will uh, let me live even up to 90, that's a good 40 years. What will I do with the next 40 years of my life when I'm already 50? And I'm just glad that the Lord convicted me, that uh, He called me, uh, not only for a season in my life, but all throughout my life. And I have committed myself to serve the Lord up to the last breath of my life. And that, some, that somehow helps me, you know, have a direction in life. Uh, I think a month ago, Kuya Jun Parkon uh, invited me to speak at the seventh anniversary of the seasoned uh, citizen in church. It will be this coming uh, Saturday. When I asked him uh, what the theme will be, uh, Kuya Jun said, uh, Pastor, we need to challenge the seasoned citizens to still take part in the Great Commission. Wow, grabe, no? Senior citizen na, active pa sa Great Commission. But he said, uh, there's still more to life. Age should not be an excuse for not pursuing God's purposes in your life. And I agree. I agree with the perspective of Kuya Jun. And I believe it is not only, for, uh, it is not only true for the senior citizens. I think it is true for every one of us. That at whatever age you are in, you must have a very clear purpose that you need to pursue in life. So I entitled my message for the senior citizen this coming Saturday, Finish Well. Time is short. We need to number our days. All right. And I believe that uh, for, for us to finish well in life, the key is to keep God always before us. We need to keep the Lord Jesus Christ always before us. The Lord Jesus Christ is not just one of the things that we revolve that revolves around our life. Everything should revolve around the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to set Christ always before us. And I was reminded of what King David wrote in Psalm 16 when he said, "I I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me." I have set the Lord always before me. Because He is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. If we set the Lord always before us, we can be assured that He will always be beside us. He will always uphold us in His righteous right hand. In verse 11, He said, You make known to me the path of life in your presence, there is fullness of joy at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. It means that if you keep the Lord always before you, He will never leave your side. He will never leave your side. You will always recognize His work in your life. And if you recognize His work in your life, He will guide you every step of the way. Last Friday, we had a uh, leader's retreat for our new church plant, GCF South Metro Bacoor. We had an overnight retreat with the, with the leaders. And during the first day, Dr. Mark Ray uh, led us in a time of prayer that involves consecration. And I think it is good for us to know that uh, the next uh, generation of leaders in our church uh, knows the importance of nurturing our being over our doing. We see it in practice in their lives that their doing is an overflow of their being with God. And that is key for us. When we consecrate ourselves today, we can expect God to do greater work in our lives tomorrow. So if you are in need of guidance today or this coming week, if you need to make a big decision in your life, if you need to receive wisdom to get out of the predicament you're in, the first thing that you need to do is to consecrate yourselves before God. And that is the main verse of our uh, sermon today in the book of Joshua. 
If you have your Bibles, can I ask you to open it to the book of Joshua? Our passage will be two chapters, uh, chapters 3 and 4. But here in chapter 3, verse 5, uh, Joshua, Joshua said to the people, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. What does it mean to consecrate ourselves? During the time of the Israelites, uh, it means to be sanctified and to be purified. And for them to be purified, they need to engage in ceremonial washing of their bodies and even their clothes. They need to offer uh, sacrifices, animal sacrifices, so that their sins will be forgiven. And Joshua was telling them, you need, we need to go through this ritual of washing and purifying ourselves, confessing our sins uh, today, so that tomorrow we will see the great work of God. So that is what Joshua uh, is saying to the Israelites. But today, in our context, we, we praise God for the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the Lord Jesus Christ came, He died on the cross, He shed His blood on the cross, so that our sins will be forgiven. He offered Himself once and for all. For all our sins. And because of that, we don't need to engage in physical washing. We don't need to wash our clothes to be cleansed. We don't need to offer uh, animal sacrifices because the Lord Jesus Christ took care of those things. And that is something that we need to thank the Lord for. And to consecrate ourselves before God in the present means to just surrender our hearts to God. Lord, here I am. Here's my heart, scrutinize my heart, search my heart for anything that is not right and pleasing before you. Convict me and I will ask for forgiveness, I will ask for cleansing, I will repent of my sin. If you do that, any barrier between you and God, God will clear that. And it will be easier for you to receive guidance from the Lord. In the first sermon in, uh, in chapter 1, we were reminded to be strong and courageous. Now, if there are challenges before you, you need to be strong and courageous because the Lord will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And then last Sunday, we were reminded about who the Lord God is. He is, he is our God. The Lord who is sovereign. The Lord who is in complete control of everything. And we were able to reaffirm who God is in our life. And today, our message is quite simple. Consecrate yourselves before God. If this week you want to experience uh, God's favor upon you today, you need to consecrate yourselves before God. So in these uh, two chapters that, uh, that we have, they were, they were in Shittim. Again, they're still there. Uh, it's about seven miles going to Jericho. And Joshua told the, the people that we need to prepare for three days. So he prepared them logistically, militarily, and now he will prepare them spiritually. So when, uh, when they crossed the Jordan, you know, the, uh, the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them, being carried by the, uh, by the priest. And the moment that the uh, feet of the priest touched the brink of the raging waters of the Jordan, the water stopped. And the Jordan dried. And then the, uh, the priest, together with the Ark of the Covenant, stayed in the middle of the garden, in garden, <laughs> middle of the river, and then all the nation, all the people passed. At the end of it, the Lord gave instruction to Joshua to choose 12 men, and each of these men should take a stone. So when they reach Gilgal, the place where they will stay for the night, in fact, that will be their base, Gilgal. They need to set up those stones as a memorial that the people can always look back to and be reminded about the power and the might of God. So we will not be reading these two chapters, but in reverence to God's Word, I want us to read the last part in, uh, in chapter 4, verses 15 to, to 24. Let's, uh, let's stand together. And let's read the, the Word of God together from the screen. We'll read Joshua verse, uh, chapter 14, verses 15 to 24. Let's uh, read together. And the Lord said to Joshua, 
command the priests bearing the ark of the testimony to come up out of the Jordan. So Joshua commanded the priests, come up out of the Jordan. And when the priests bearing the ark of the covenant of the Lord came up from the midst of the Jordan, and the sole of the priest's feet were lifted up on dry ground, the waters of the Jordan returned to their place and overflowed all its banks as before. The people came up out of the Jordan on the tenth day of the first month, and they encamped at Gilgal on the east border of Jericho. And those twelve stones which they took out of the Jordan, Joshua set up at Gilgal. And he said to the people of Israel, When your children ask their fathers in times to come, What do these stones mean? Then you shall let your children know. Israel pass over this Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan for you until you pass over, as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up for us until we pass over, so that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty, that you may fear the Lord your God forever. Father, we want to thank you for your word. Thank you, Father, for reminding us through these uh, verses that we have just read that you are mighty indeed and you are worthy to be feared as the Lord our God forever. We ask, Father, that your Holy Spirit will meet us where we are. May you remove anything that will hinder us from receiving your word. And I pray, Lord, for your help. As Elder Paul prayed earlier, may you anoint me with your spirit so that I will be faithful in proclaiming your message to all of us this morning. May it bring change to our lives and bring glory to your name. We ask, Father, for your blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. So the main, uh, the main point of our sermon is the need for consecration. As I mentioned earlier, if you are about to make a big decision in your life, you'll be facing a big challenge this week. You need to consecrate yourselves before God. And in any decision that, uh, that we make, I hope and pray that we will not uh, dare to make that decision when we have not consecrated ourselves to God. In, uh, in the story of the, the Israelites, while they were wandering in the wilderness, they went to a cycle of, uh, of disobedience to the Lord. And they suffered because of that. They failed to consecrate themselves. They failed to purify themselves. And they suffered the repercussions of those things. So in the same way, I believe in our present context, consecration is very important. And if ever you are about to make a big decision in your life, in your family, in relationships, in finances, even in buying a house or a car or big item in your life, or you are in the middle of changing careers or engaging in a business, dare not make a decision without consecrating yourselves before God. There are two things that we need to remember from the wilderness experience of, uh, of the Israelites. The first one is this. God demands exact obedience to His commands. The adult generation wandering in the wilderness, they disobeyed God. They, they feared the men of the promised land more than they feared God. They were, they were demoralized knowing that uh, the men in the promised land are giants. They live in fortified cities and their hearts melted rather than putting their trust in God. So this generation weren't able to set foot on the promised land, of course, except Joshua and Caleb. Moses, now a man dedicated to God, Giving his life to God also was not able to enter the promised land because he did not follow exactly God's instructions. Twice when they were in the wilderness, 
the Israelites grumbled because they were thirsty. They grumbled to Moses. They grumbled against God. So God told Moses, okay, you strike the rock and water will come out. And he did. And the thirst of the Israelites were, were quenched. But in another instance, the Israelites again uh, grumbled because they were thirsty. God told Moses, speak to the rock. But most likely, he was thinking, during the first situation, God asked me to strike the rock. So what he did, although he heard that God told him to speak to the rock, he struck the rock. And as a result of that, as a result of that, he was not able to set foot on the promised land. This shows us that God demands exact obedience to his instructions. So therefore, we need to learn how to listen to God, not to get ahead of God. I also remember when uh, God instructed Moses to build the tabernacle. He said in Exodus 25, 9, he said to Moses, exactly as I show you concerning the pattern of the tabernacle and of all its furniture, so you shall make it. It means that every item in the tabernacle must be built and made exactly as God commanded. Exactly as I show you, so you shall make it. And when I was uh, reading this uh, about, I think, 10 chapters about how to build the tabernacle and all its furnishings, no, it, it was really a very difficult uh, job for, for Moses. And Oholiab and Bezalel, the craftsmen that uh, help uh, Moses. Why? Because they need to be precise. Wala naman silang computer, right? Wala naman silang mga autocad, right? Manual lahat. And yet, God wanted them to do exactly as He instructed, as he instructed them. And we know the story of Uzzah. When King David was uh, bringing the ark, of God in a, in a new cart. It was in an oxen, but the oxen stumbled. And out of the goodness of the heart of, uh, of Usa, he reached out the, his hand to touch the, the ark. What happened to him? He died. He died. Why? Because God gave a very specific prohibition that no one should touch the ark. You may be wondering, how should the people carry it? Well, God gave them instruction to put four rings you know, at the ark so that they can insert two poles, and that's how they should carry it. So we have a God who, who demands exactly our obedience. Now, second, we also need to, to learn that God always prepares His people for their next assignment. During the uh, wilderness experience, the, the younger generation witnessed how God faithfully provided uh, their provision, their needs uh, daily, the manna, right? So God showed His faithfulness to this next generation, and I believe that uh, what this young generation saw and experienced about who God is and how He is working in His life should give them confidence that when they cross the promised land, when they conquer the promised land, they will have the same God who will be faithful in providing everything that they need to fulfill His purposes and grace upon them. So when God parted the, the Jordan River, it demonstrated God's power as a conquering warrior. God is the one who will fight the battle for you. You don't need to fight it alone because God will fight the battle for you. The battle is the Lord's. It is not Hours. So when, they, uh, when they're about to, to cross the Jordan, in uh, verse 3, the officers of the people told, told see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord God being carried by the Levitical priest. Then you shall set out from your place and follow it. Yet there shall be a distance between you and a and it, about 2,000 cubits in length. It's about 900 meters. 
Do not come near it in order that you may know the way you should go, for you have not passed this way before. So, the Ark of the Covenant is very significant in chapters 3 and 4. It was mentioned uh, 16 times, directly excluding the pronouns that refer to it. So, we must not miss the point that the Ark of the Covenant has a very, very significant role in the life of the nation of Israel. What does the Ark of the Covenant represent? It represents the presence of God. In Exodus uh, 25, God uh, gave instructions to Moses on how it must be built. It is a box. The dimensions, the material that will be used, the design was explicitly given by God to Moses. And then God said, you shall put the mercy seat on top of the ark. And in the ark, you shall put the testimony that I shall give you, the Ten Commandments. There, I will meet you, and from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubim that are on the ark of the testimony, I will speak with you about all that I will give you in commandment for the people of Israel. So the ark of the covenant represents God's presence. It is also where God speaks to his people. And the, the good thing here is, when the ark moves, the people move. When the ark stops, the people should stop. They should not go ahead of the ark. Now, why do they need to keep a distance about 900 meters from the ark? Two things. First, they cannot go near the Ark of the Covenant because that is a holy place. They are unworthy to come near God's holy presence. So there must be a distance between the people and the Ark of the Covenant. Again, we praise God for the Lord Jesus Christ because when He gave Himself up on the cross, He broke that barrier. That's why right here, right now, Sunday after Sunday, we can come before the presence of, a holy God, of our holy God because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. And the Lord himself is in us. When before, there must be a distance between God and man, Jesus Christ broke that barrier. Praise God for the faith that he has given to us. And I pray for those who have not yet professed your faith in the finished work of Christ on the cross. I pray that God will meet you where you are and allow you to recognize that all of us are sinners in need of a Savior in the person of Jesus Christ. We need to repent of our sin. You need to repent of your sins and believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for your sins that you can never repay. May the Lord give you the faith to believe. I cannot do that for you, but I know that God loves you. God doesn't want you to leave this auditorium without settling your eternal destiny. Being uh, reminded about God's presence, I think uh, that again emphasizes the fact that every time we will come before the presence of God, we need to consecrate ourselves. There must be a distance between God and the Israelites before, but now Jesus broke that barrier. But I think there's also another reason why the Israelites have to have a distance uh, from the Ark of the Covenant. And it is very specific in the passage. In verse, uh, in verse 4, when he said, Yet there shall be a distance between you and it, about 2,000 cubits in length. Do not come near it in order that you may know the way you shall go, for you have not passed this way before. They are about to walk in unfamiliar territory and God will be the one to lead them God will be the one to to guide them so they must always look up to the ark of the covenant so that God can lead the way for them more than uh, 10 years ago there was a period in uh, in my ministry for three months every week I go up and down Baguio 
I will leave uh, Ortigas uh, Thursday morning, arrive there after lunch, do a Bible study 5 p.m., do another Bible study at 7 p.m. Friday morning, I will lead a prayer for three months. Consecutive, every week, I go up and down. But I love to drive. And I prefer driving, uh, going up to Baguio using Cannon Road rather than Marcos Highway. Because Cannon Road, more exciting, a lot of curbs, you know. <laughs> but it's dangerous, right? <laughs> but my challenge was, if there will be a, 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 a group of vehicles who are driving slowly, uh, God is testing my patience. So I really need to be patient. But one day, I cannot forget, when I uh, entered Cannon Road, there's this uh, truck in front of me. Most likely, it doesn't have a load because it is faster than usual. Ang bilis niya. All the way from, uh, from the National Highway, all the way to, to Baguio, I was following him. And he guided me. Mabilis kasi nauna siya. Mga dangerous sa curbs, nauna siya. Pag may mga kasalubong, nauna siya alam ko. So I followed. I followed him. I also remember every time I will drive at night before, when I was younger, uh, I love to drive at night, especially in provincial roads. It's dark, right? It's, uh, it's challenging, but it's also dangerous. So when I'm not familiar with the place, I will drive slowly and safely. But if there will be a vehicle in front of me, that vehicle will light the way for me, and I will just enjoy driving at night. And I think that is the same with the Ark of the Covenant, God's presence in our life. We need to always set God before us because He will surely lead the way for us. And when you are in an unfamiliar territory, as I mentioned, you need to look upon God for direction. If you are in a very difficult situation, look upon God for direction. Because I guarantee you, God will never bring you to a place where His presence is not already there. And if you are recognizing God's presence in your life, what more can you ask? All that you need to do is to ask Him to lead and to guide you. And He will surely grant you favor and success. But there is a prerequisite for us to be able to experience the blessing of God's presence in our life. And it is consecration. And that is what Joshua said to the people. Yes, the Ark of the Covenant will lead us. But we need to consecrate ourselves today. So that we will be able to see the wonderful work that God will do for us tomorrow. But let me pause here for a while and uh, reflect on this uh, on the principles that we can glean from this. As I mentioned, if you want to experience God's work this coming week, consecrate yourselves today. It's also a, a reminder for me that in the Old Testament, every time that Yahweh appeared before His people, He required them to engage in physical and spiritual preparation. They have to wash themselves, they have to wash their clothes, they have to abstain from sexual relations, and they need to confess their sins. And it reminded me that if we lack physical and spiritual preparation, it will result in failure to perceive and see the work of God in our life. Spiritual preparation always precedes a significant encounter with God. Like for example, uh, this uh, today or every Sunday, we know, as I mentioned to you uh, months before, that it is a privilege for us to worship God. Because God is a holy God. And no one can come before Him except through the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And every time you enter this auditorium, I want you to to imagine that God is giving us the privilege for an hour and a half 
na to mimic and copy what the angels and the saints have gone before us is doing in heaven right at this very moment, worshiping God for eternity. And that is a beautiful picture. And we need to, to experience the power of God's presence as we worship, as we worship Him. But many times we fail to have a significant encounter with God because we lack physical and spiritual preparation. It is a prerequisite for us to have a significant kind of worship. Lack of uh, adequate preparation results in a negative worship experience. If you did not, uh, if you did not get enough sleep uh, last night, you know you feel uh, low. You have a very short uh, con concentration, but not only physically, but uh, more importantly, you might have a self-centered attitude on why you worship. You do not have the right perspective of worship. You lack focus. You even have a critical spirit because you lack adequate preparation. And it will surely result in a negative worship experience. But if you will be prepared physically, emotionally, and spiritually, I tell you, you will have a very positive worship experience. And worship becomes a devotion. Now, rather than an obligation, you won't drag your feet to worship. You will be excited to come and worship because you will have the right perspective. You will be focusing on God rather than focusing on man. So it is very important for us to prepare ourselves every time that we encounter the Lord in our life. So going back to our passage now, from uh, verse uh, 6 uh, going up, we'll see here a number of dialogues between uh, Joshua and the priest, the Lord to Joshua, and Joshua to the people. And they're about to cross the, the Jordan. And the moment that the feet of the priest uh, who are carrying the ark touched the brink of the raging waters, the river was tamed. And it testified to God's power over nature. Now, I don't have the luxury of time to, to go to the details of these uh, two chapters, but one thing I want to highlight is this. If you will notice in this narrative, the instructions of the Lord to Joshua was placed in different uh, uh, scenarios. Most of them are brief and direct instructions. I was wondering... Why didn't God just, you know, talk to Joshua once and gave him the instructions you now at the same time, all at the same time, and told him what to expect? But that narrative did not show that. God gave instructions at different times. And he did not reveal his specific purpose. And this reminds me that uh, many times God will not uh, give his full instructions to us all at once, or tell us and reveal to us what to expect from His command and what He wants us to do so that we will be tested of our faith. And eventually, our faith will be stronger in Him. God will not fully reveal His will upon us because He wants us to wait upon Him. And Joshua did not move without receiving instructions from God. He waited patiently for God. And when he received those instructions, that's the time that he moved. When you are faced with a big decision in life, or when you're planning to do something, I would suggest that you follow these things that I have gleaned from these two chapters of Joshua. First, you need to Learn to wait upon God. Do not jump into it immediately. Do not let yourself be carried by emotions or by the situations. You need to learn how to wait upon God. David, in, his, in one of his psalms, said, uh, you need to wait upon Him, and as you wait upon Him, God will give you the strength and the courage to wait for His will in your life. So as you wait upon Him, it is not something that uh, you wait and you don't do anything. It is active waiting. 
It means that as you wait upon Him, you need to listen to God through His, through His Word. God has given and revealed all the things that we need to do in life, to live life to the full, so that we can surrender our life to Him in His Word. And God reveals His will to us through the Scripture. So you need to fight for your time with God. Search His will for you in the, in the Scripture. Every day, you need to listen to God. Now you come to God with no agenda. Many times we come to God because we need this, right? We have a problem. We need something that we, we want God to address for us, to solve for us. But it will be good if we will come to our time with God with no, ag with no agenda except to let God speak to us through His Word. Because as we let God speak to us, as we meditate on His Word, we will be able to know His will for us. Do not take matters into your own hands. Do not take matters into your own hands. You always need to seek guidance from Him. And as you seek guidance from Him, again, you need to consecrate yourself before God. Then and only then, you should take action. Sometimes, uh, this process will take a day, other times a week, other times uh, a month, or other times longer. We cannot put God in a box. But God will definitely reveal His will to you as you consecrate yourself before Him on a regular basis. So Joshua waited patiently upon the Lord, followed His instructions, God's instructions, and then he was able to lead the people crossing the Jordan to reach the other side. And then, let's go to what we have read earlier. When they came up out of the Jordan, Joshua took the 12 stones and set it up at Gilgal. And Joshua said to the people, When your children ask their fathers in times to come, what do these stones mean? Then you shall let your children know, Israel passed over this Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan for you until you pass over, as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up for us until we passed over. So that serves as a, a remembrance, a memorial. And Gilgal has a very significant place in the history of Israel. It's like a base for them. They always go back to that. Now, in the history of Israel. And every time they will go back to that, they should be reminded about the power of God, about the faithfulness of God. The Lord who delivered them uh, from Egypt, the Lord who will empower them to conquer the promised land, the Lord who parted the Red Sea, the Lord who parted the Jordan will be the same God who will see them through in their own respective situations. And this is not only... Uh, uh, written in the scripture for the Israelites because in verse 24 it says, so that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty, that you may fear the Lord your God forever. And every time people will read this, we must be reminded that we have a God who is powerful, that we have a mighty God who will conquer all our battles in life and He is worthy to be feared. And that is the memorial that was set up by Joshua. A very good memorial to remind them of who God is and what God can do for them. Yesterday, I, I had the privilege to, to watch uh, UAAP volleyball uh, championship game. Uh, I'm not sure any of you are following the volleyball, right? Uh, some of you. Uh, usually I, I watch uh, in the internet, but uh, yesterday I was able to watch in Mall of Asia Arena. And we, we I'm not sure if you've watched uh, a UAP game, whether it's basketball or volleyball, if you are there in the arena, lahat ng stress mo mawawala. Maisisigaw mo, right? Pagdating mo doon, ang blood pressure mo mababa. Maayos. <laughs> At kidding aside, it's very, it's very exciting. I really enjoyed it. I was with, uh, with Shole and my sister and my, my brother-in-law. 
But tickets are so limited. So, out of the goodness of the heart of Linda, yung slot niya, binigay niya sa daughter namin. So, I, I enjoy that. But uh, one of the key players of Ateneo is uh, Kat Tolentino. If you are following this, you know, on her first collegiate career, first, uh, first collegiate career, she had three ACL injuries. And can you imagine the pain and the disappointment, right? But she just carried on and, uh, and pushed through uh, her passion in, uh, in playing for the Lady Eagles in spite of this injury. And then uh, she was quoted uh, uh, in the news, which I saw early this morning, that I want to share with you. This is what she said. I'm just thankful to God for making not just the journey hard, but it was something that was memorable because without those three ACL injuries, I, would ha I wouldn't have had as much passion and I think I wouldn't be here. Those injuries made me the player I am today. Setbacks can sometimes be blessings from God. It will give us the motivation to carry on with life. I'm not sure what, what injuries you are getting in life, what hurts you are carrying in life, what bad experiences you are carrying in life, but I want to tell you, God will use that to prepare you for the greater things He has for you today and even tomorrow. We need to put our trust in the sovereign God, in our sovereign God, that He is powerful, He is worthy to be feared, and He can make us champions if we keep Him at the center of our life. For Kat Tolentino, this uh, three ACL injuries that happened, I think, three years ago, served as her inspiration. Every time she will remember it, she had more passion to play volleyball, to give her best every game, and it benefited her. And eventually, the Lord granted her and the team favor. So milestone markers in life is very important for us. You need to have at least one or two or three you know, experiences in life that you can look back in the past. And when you remember those things, you will see, God is good. God delivered me in my financial predicament then. God will do the same for me. God healed me in the past. God will heal me again today. God gave me comfort in the past when I was so down and discouraged. I know God will do the same for me because we have a God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Milestone markers. Think about it. Think of those things that you can go back to and be reminded about God's faithfulness in your life. I've shared this to you before, but I want to share this again. This is one of my milestone markers in my life, this uh, piece of paper which I already taped with scotch tape, uh, has been in my wallet for more than 20 years. When I'm not yet in the pastoral ministry, I was still in the business. And during this time, God is reaching out to me because I was running away from Him. I do not know if I can be able to be a faithful follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. But during that uh, time, sometime in uh, January, I think 1998, or 1999, I was going through this uh, devotional material and walk through the Bible. Walk through the Old Testament. At the back, there is this brief devotional, and this is not original for me. For me, I took those uh, uh, sentences and those ideas in that uh, devotional material. And every time I look at this, I am reminded that if I put my trust In God, He will do great things for me. Things that I will never expect. And for the past 20 years, He did that over and over. This devotion says, One key to consistency in the Christian life is simply giving God time to work. Rough edges take time to smooth. Grow to a maturity never occurs overnight. But each day, can be a step in the right direction. Take the first step into the water, referring to the Jordan. Then and only then would God perform a miracle 
roll back the, powder, the waters, dry up the puddles, and send the people across, kicking up dust at every step. Dry sandals followed trusting obedience. The last part says, trust Him for the unexpected and let Him surprise and delight you by doing the unexplainable. May the Lord do great things in your life as you keep Him at the center of it all. May the Lord convict you that we need to put the Lord Jesus Christ at the center of our life, to set Him always before us, because if we do, He will be able to guide us and lead us in the way where we should go. We saw that in what God did for the Israelites. God can do the same for you. Again, do not make, do not dare take that first step without consulting God. And for us to experience the power of God's presence in our life, we need to come clean before Him. And I pray that as you look forward to this coming week, may you be able to look at this week with great anticipation of the great work that God will do for you. I was just speaking to a, a church member after the first service, and she told me, Pastor God is so good. After five years, I am cleared of lupus. Praise the Lord for that. We have a God who is mighty. We have a God who is powerful. And He will be the same God who will do wonderful work in your life. But you need to consecrate yourselves before Him. Can you bow your heads? Lord, we thank you for what King David wrote in Psalm 139. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any grievous way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for reminding us that we need to keep you always before us. And if we consecrate ourselves before you, we can anticipate the greater things you have for us this coming week. I pray, Lord, for each and every person present here. Give them, Lord, confidence that you are mighty, that you are powerful, that you will bless them, Lord, this coming week. With whatever challenges and problems and issues they are facing, allow them, Father, to leave this place with confidence that the battle is yours. It is not theirs. And you will grant them victory. But before we experience that, we want to ask your Holy Spirit to search our hearts for anything that is not right. Since that we need to confess before you. In the quietness of your heart, come clean before God. Whatever sin He convicts you of, may He humble yourself and ask for forgiveness. And as you confess of your sin, I pray that God will empower you to repent from your sin, to turn away from it, not to do it over and over. Because God is worthy to be feared. And as we reflect on this song, may He renew your spirit, give you encouragement in your hearts that He will surely lead you to victory. You stood before creation Eternity in your hand You spoke the earth into motion My soul now to stand You stood before my faith Carried the cross for my shame. My sin weighed upon your shame. 
shoulders, my soul now to stand. So what can I say? Father God, we, uh, we thank you so much for your grace upon us. Thank you for your mercies. That every time we come before you, surrendering our hearts, asking for cleansing, you are so faithful to give us a fresh start. Thank you, Father, for giving all of us an opportunity to be renewed in our spirit, to recommit our love for Jesus, and to put all our trust in you. Because you are our mighty God, who is worthy to be feared. That even in our failure and shame, you always carry us. 
and see us through. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness. And I pray, Lord, for each and every person present here, that as they consecrated themselves before you, you know, Father, the things that they will be facing this week, allow them to be strong and to be courageous. Because you will never leave them. You will never forsake them. And you will do great things in their lives. I pray, Father, that you will guide them continually every step of the way this coming week. You know, Father, their needs. You know, Father, their desires. May you satisfy all of them and fulfill all of them, even as if they are in scorched places. We know you can provide satisfaction for them. When they feel weak, I pray that you will make their bones strong. Give them the courage to carry on and allow them, Father, to be victorious in life every day. And if their spirits are dissipated and quenched, I pray that you will make them like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters do not fail, and allow them, Father, to receive the refreshing and renewal from the Lord Jesus Christ and your word. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly, more than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. Sing this together as we close our time. Here in this house of the great King, we come together now to worship Him. This house is built on Christ our Shaken, cannot be shaken. For God is awesome. God is awesome in this place. We sense His presence as we sing His praise. There is power here for miracles. Send the captives free, make the broken whole. God is awesome. Metro and have a blessed week ahead.